So I'll try to combine two reports here by keeping them brief because they are making additional points. This one is from the Philippines about measuring the depth. We talked about depth of adaptation before in the global stock take, so you can think of this as the depth of sustainability maybe, okay? So how can how green can you go? Initiatives of dark green universities in the campus will see the scale they have defined and how it's used to compare different universities. A number of Philippine universities have called themselves green schools. Others have gone beyond being green and consider themselves dark green campuses so there is a competition creative tension stability uh, sorry sustainability initiatives in campuses called dark green schools or DGS have been around since the 1970s a DGS is considered both as a status and a process of certification or ac accreditation so status seeking always can drive positive actions as a status a certified DGS means that the school has met certain standards of quality set by accrediting agency it doesn't necessarily mean sustainability it just means dark green in some metric as a certification process it signifies the school's commitment to continuously enhance and sustains sustain one's accomplishments. This paper used the case study method to showcase the policies and practices of selected dark green universities in the Philippines that have met the standards of quality of a DGS using a mixed uh, methods approach of analysis of documents, uh, ocular visits and interviews so just eyewitness uh, anecdotal evidences. This paper examines the strategies and initiatives of four universities that are accredited and or self-assessed DGS and how they operationalized the DGS as a whole uh, school approach, as a whole school approach. Data gathered illustrate that beyond the integration of the elements of sustainable development, climate change and disaster management into the university vision and mission, curriculum, uh, research and extension services. The selected universities have adopted campus policies and programs on solid waste management, energy, water and paper conservation, water conservation and treatment, anti-pollution and clean transport. So Philippines is often subject to typhoons so they have good that they have kept climate change and disaster management uh, in the university vision and mission. More than this the schools studied have transformed the academic campus into green living spaces providing the academic community with green gardens, parks, forests and native tree production. Practices of four cases of universities towards not only a green but a dark green school show that achieving environment sus environmental sustainability requires a whole school approach where students, faculty, administration and the rest of the academic community cooperate towards achieving sustainability at the university and community levels. So this there is a green metric here for the world university rankings uh, in 2017 and the criteria setting and infrastructure, energy and climate change, waste, water, transportation, weightage is given, example indicators are given so for waste you have program to reduce use of paper and plastic, waste recycling, toxic waste handling, organic and inorganic waste treatment, sewage disposal and so on. Uh, so rank of four uh, Philippine universities in the world university ranking uh, you, you know this is the Indonesian green metric ranking in 2017 I won't go into the detail but each of the uh, criteria is uh, graded so you can see that status can be an important driver there so here is the scale level of accreditation of green schools as perceived by this organization light green so three years green five years dark green seven years so national search for sustainable and eco-friendly school criteria DNR EMB Philippines so you have points and description of the criteria with the criteria being administration curriculum and so this is the level of accreditation uh, criteria curriculum and instruction sustainability programs research extension student involvement and total score doesn't necessarily ensure campus sustainability itself right so you have to be careful so what did they learn two important success factors in becoming a uh, uh, 
deep green school, dark green school, sorry, may be identified. First is the set of institutional decisions in support of campus sustainability, which includes sustainable development inspired university mission and vision, the formulation of long-term plans, always critical, and creation of an office on sustainability or environmental management. Coordination is always important for monitoring and evaluation. Second, success factor is a stakeholder engagement which is present in all universities at the level of planning and implementation so there were implementation of the green initiatives areas of success are observed in the use of green energy improved utilization of non-renewable resources waste management and sustained community engagement let's look at another example here green campus and environmental preservation on a brazilian environment uh, Brazilian University, sorry. So we're going from one end to the other or across the Pacific as you would have. <coughs> the University of uh, Paso Fundo during its 50, I, I mean uh, the way I say it, it sounds Spanish or Italian, uh, Brazilians probably say Paso Fundo, <laughs> I don't know, during its 50 years of impl uh, implantation has searched to insert itself into the urban landscape of the city in urban or uh, landscape terms. The methodology for elaboration of the environmental management plan of the flora in the campus one sorry in the campus I attend the environmental management system guidelines of the UPF. I didn't read that correctly at all. The methodology for elaboration of the environmental management management plan of the flora in the campus I attend the environmental management system guidelines of the UPF. The sentence is just <coughs> written, written horrendously, but let me read it again. If I don't try to correct it, maybe it reads well. The methodology for elaboration of the environmental management plan of the flora in the campus one attends the environmental management system guidelines of the UPF. Maybe that makes sense. Tree species were identified in botanic survey uh, and defining the permanent preservation areas with individual components from the native vegetation in the region of the mixed Ombrophilus forest. From these surveys, the formation, the Ombrophilus forest, mixed Ombrophilus forest. Let's look up what is Ombrophilus. I did look it up when I was reading the book, but obviously I forgot. Ombrophilus. Phobia, there is <coughs> an ombrophobia, extreme fear of rain. So, ambrophilus are the forests that love the rain. Brazil has obviously a lot of rain in most places. From these, so you learn the new world. Ombrophobia means fear of rain, ombrophilia means uh, ombrophobia is fear of rain, ambrophilia means love of the rain. From these surveys, the formation of an ecological corridor with a strip of native vegetation was pointed at uh, as a mitigating measure, creating a green area for the interconnection of these arbor arboreal fragments. It equally indicates the implementation of a veg uh, vegetal replacement plan, vegetation replacement plan with native species. The importance of this area is highlighted by creating an environment where users, so internal and external community, can perceive several examples of flora besides contributing to the improvement of the mi microclimate with a dense green area interconnecting several buildings. The university does not only strengthen its formation role of students, teachers and external community that use campus, uh, that use Campus One as an urban park, but also enhances the sustainable performance in the local and regional area. The uh, chapter has lots of maps and lots of uh, indicators of how uh, this vegetation land use management and uh, native uh, vegetation management has happened, but I'll just jump to final considerations. According to the survey of Flora's monitoring of uh, UPF campus, Paso Fundo, uh, 
UPS's Campus One, the vegetation of the campus meets its role in cultural, educational, and historical preservation, keeping the regional and characteristic vegetation as well as softening the climatic conditions of the space, maintaining the diversity of the species, contributing to minimize the visual impact of the constructed ambient comparing ambience comparing to the environment and also to minimize noise and CO2 emissions. So there are metrics they've been using. This guarantees more comfort to the users of the area meeting its social role and improvement of life quality. So there are well-being considerations which are non-market goods which not o do not always get counted in the cost-benefit analysis. In this sense the paper reflects the valorization needs of green areas. The value addition by the green areas to the contribution for a better environmental quality of college education spaces and its direct linking with apprenticeship for sustainability. Green spaces have a big impact on mental well-being in general and that means learning is hopefully helped as well. Therefore, as seen in the operating license, the survey indicated that inspections and annual assistance must be provided along with the respective reports in order to allow guaranteeing the mitigation of environmental impacts and maintenance of the PPA's uh, imperious I imperative in this kind of activities. It is also important to highlight the role of the vegetation and green spaces in the university campuses not only as a factor of environmental quality improvement of these structures either in aesthetic and landscaping terms or in microclimate or urban effects but also as an element of the potential valorization of the vegetation in environmental education in the university and regional community meeting the use of the campus one as an urban park so you are serving the larger community beyond the campus likewise the green areas can be an example of a live laboratory contributing to the learning process. Th maybe they meant the living lab that we have been discussing. Let's confirm PPA again since again I forgot. So let me attempt again to look for it. Last time it took forever but because the um, uh, doesn't even show up. Blockchain? What are you talking about? Okay, sorry. PPA should be in here. I am doing this live, so obviously that's not always a good idea. Um, let's jump to Philippines and then to Brazil and see if I can quickly grab it here. Uh, Brazil, so la 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 la. Just stay with me for a minute. Uh, I will give up in a second if I cannot find it. Let me pause it and find it so that... Here we go. I don't know how I forgot it. PPA is Permanent Preservation Areas, part of the environmental preservation metric you want to measure and protect these areas as well. Okay, Finance, protection and positive impacts monetary and non-monetary, so climate change impacts, greenhouse gas reductions, mental well-being impacts and so on. Okay, so let's leave this podcast here with these two uh, summaries.